Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last class, uh, we had looked at uh, the cycle analysis for a ramjet and we had started the cycle analysis for a uh, turbojet. Let us continue the cycle analysis for the turbojet. Uh, if you look at the TS diagram, uh, firstly let us assume that all processes are 100% uh, efficient. That is, uh, we will assume an ideal cycle initially, and we have also started something wherein the flow is optimally expanded in the nozzle. These were the uh, two things that we are going to look at. Uh, if we take an ideal cycle, then there is compression in the uh, intake itself. So, I will call 0 to 2 and then through the compressor, then you have heat addition, then you have expansion through the turbine. then you have expansion again through the nozzle okay this is the ts diagram we have okay now we had uh, derived certain things in the last class we had derived that tau b is nothing but theta b by tau c theta naught and uh, we got this expression for f by m dot a a naught this was the expression that we had okay now let's try and find out how to get these ratios just like the uh, previous time wherein we had done this cascading in ramjets let's do the cascading and find out how we get these temperatures now to get t7 by t0 again you cascade t t7 t7 by t t7 into T T 7 by T T 6, T T 6 by T T 5, T T 5 by T T 4, T T 4 by T T 3, T T 3 by Again, the subscript T here indicates stagnation conditions and uh, if you take a look at this, all these cancels out and you get T, T7 by T0. Okay. So, we also know that the last term is nothing but T7 
theta naught from our previous uh, class. So, we have this is nothing but a ratio of stagnation to static. So, we can express this in terms of Mach number as 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 7 square. Okay. Now, what is T T 7 by T T 6? This is flow through the nozzle. Uh, again, if the efficiencies are 1, the stagnation temperature ratio will be the same. So, this is 1 and uh, T T 6 by T T 5, this is flow through the after burner. Anyway, we are not considering in this analysis, this analysis is without the after burner. So, this will again be 1 and uh, T T 5 by T T 4 is flow through the turbine. Now, flow through the turbine because it is again an isentropic process, this ratio will also be what will that ratio be? Hmm? T T 5 by T T 4. One. You've forgotten something. We derived in the last class that this is uh, tau t, and uh, T T four by T T three is process through the combustor. So I'll call it tau b into. Uh, T T 3 by T T 2 is flow through the compressor. Again, this is tau c into uh, again you get the diffuser. Diffuser this ratio because the flow is isentropic is 1 and into theta naught. Okay. So, we know that tau b is this, if we substitute it there, we will get T 7 by T naught is equal to tau t into tau b is theta b by tau c theta naught into tau c theta naught. this is the ratio that we have. This tau c theta naught and this tau c theta naught cancels off and we get theta b tau t divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 7 square. Okay. Now, similarly we will do for the pressures. P 7 by P naught is equal to, now we assume all efficiencies to be 1. So, the first one this would be if you cascade it, it will be P 7 by P T 7 into P T 7 by P T 6, P T 6 by P T 5. This is the cascading, and uh, if we plug in the values, then this is the ratio of uh, static to stagnation condition. So, you get 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 7 square to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1, then this is flow through nozzle. So, you get for all efficiencies being 1 you get 1, then you have flow through after burner, this is again 1, 
what is this flow through turbine? You get pi t, okay, pressure ratio across turbine and uh, what happens in an ideal cycle uh, to the pressure ratio across the combustor? For an ideal cycle, the pressure ratio across the combustor, it will be isentropy, isobaric process. So, the pressure is the same. So, this ratio would be 1 and uh, P T 3 by P T 2, this is again pi C ratio, pressure ratio across the compressor and P T 2 by P T naught is flow through diffuser for a ideal process this is 1 and lastly this is nothing but theta naught to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1 okay fine now uh, i can change this to tau t and we'll get a new ratio so i'll do that i'll get tau t tau c theta naught divided by 1 plus okay this is the ratio that we get and if you remember we have taken the case where the flow is optimally expanded through the nozzle. So, what is P 7 by P naught? 1. So, we can rewrite this as this ratio as 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 7 square must be equal to tau t tau c theta naught. Right? I can take out the powers without uh, any problem and therefore, I can write it like this. Now, remember in this expression for T 7 by T naught, in the denominator I have 1 plus gamma minus 1 uh, by 2 m 7 square, which is what I have got there. So, if I plug in this value, I will get uh, T 7 by T naught is equal to theta b tau t divided by tau t tau c theta naught. So, I will get this is the temperature ratio. Now, to find the Mach number ratio, we will have to uh, take this expression and derive the ratio for Mach numbers. So, we know that uh, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 7 square is equal to tau t tau c theta naught and we also know 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m naught square is equal to theta naught. So, from these two expressions, I can write m 7 is equal to tau c tau t theta naught minus 1 okay. and similarly m naught we had done this earlier is equal to Okay. 
and the ratio m 7 by m 0 will then become So, this is the ratio of Mach numbers and that is the ratio of temperatures that we were looking for. We got those two and if we plug them into the expression for thrust F by m dot A A naught, okay, that is what we were looking for. So, F by m dot A A naught is equal to what we had got was m naught into T 7 by T naught into m 7 by m naught minus 1 and if we substitute the ratios for T 7 by T naught and M 7 by M naught, we will get This is the expression for uh, non-dimensional thrust that we were looking for. Now, is this expression complete? Is there something that is still missing? See, uh, here you have got tau c and tau t, right? But uh, we know that compressor and turbine power balance must be there. So, they cannot be independent of each other, they must be related to each other and therefore, you can write one expression for connecting these. right? So, there is a relationship for connecting tau c and tau t that is through the compressor turbine power balance okay now if we do the compressor turbine power balance we will get this ratio connecting tau c to tau t now we know that uh, flow through compressor is m dot a C p T T 3 minus T T 2, this must be equal to m dot a into 1 plus f T T 4 minus T T 5. Now, there are two things that we are going to make an assumption on. If you like take a look at this, this is primarily air getting compressed in the compressor, whereas for the flow through the turbine, you have product gases. Uh, if you remember earlier, when we said 
gamma and r are the same for both air and exhaust gases right if gamma and r are cons is the same for both air and exhaust gases then cp what should happen to cp cp should also be the same for both of them so assuming cp to be constant and also we will make another assumption that we have been doing all along that the fuel air ratio f is very much less than 1 when for a turbojet because typically this will be of the order of 0 0.02 to 0 0.04. So, even if you neglect it you are going to make a 2 or 4 percent error. Okay. So, with these two assumptions this will simplify to T T 3 minus T T 2 must be equal to T T 4 minus T T 5. So, what we do from here is we know by cascading what the ratios are. So, we just have to divide both sides by T naught. Let us divide both sides by T naught. Now, what is T T 3 by T naught? Again, if we cascade, I will get T T 3 by T T 2 into T T 2 by T T naught into T T naught by T naught. What is T T 3 by T T 2? This is flow through compressor. So, this will be tau t uh, sorry tau c and uh, this ratio is 1 across the diffuser so and this is theta naught right t t naught by t naught is theta naught and this would be t t 2 by T T naught into T T naught by T naught. This again is T T two by T T naught is one, and this would be theta naught. Fine. And what is T four by T naught? this is theta b this is from our definition and t t 5 by t t naught i can write it as t t 5 by t t 4 into t t 4 by t naught what is this t t 5 by t t 4 is tau t this is tau t into theta v. Okay. So, I end up getting if I take out theta naught as common theta naught into tau c minus 1 must be equal to 
theta b into 1 minus tau t. So, therefore, I can write the expression for tau t as I can write tau t as equal to okay. So, this is the expression for tau t. Now, if I plug in this expression for tau t in this expression for f by m dot a a naught that is the non dimensional thrust. Before we do that, uh, what we see here is we need this ratio, all the tau t and tau, uh, tau c terms are only in this ratio. So, let us look at this first term in the uh, under the square root sign and let us try to simplify that. So, tau c theta b theta naught right divided by tau c theta naught minus I can write the numerator combining these terms, these are the terms containing tau c and tau t. So, if I combine these terms and rewrite it, I will get it like this, okay, which is uh, I can simplify this further and uh, write it as tau c theta naught cancels off here, I will get theta b tau t minus theta b by tau c theta naught. And now, if I substitute for tau t in this expression, okay, I will get this as equal to theta b minus theta naught tau c okay. So, that is Now, if I plug back this expression into that and rewrite my expression, I will get the non dimensional thrust as f by m dot a a naught must be equal to Okay. This is the final expression for uh, in non dimensional thrust. Yes, tau t will not affect 
see tau t and tau c are connected no tau theta b is a controlling factor is okay with you because it is a turbine inlet temperature. So, that is fine with you what you are looking for is why is it that tau t has uh, gone out. See tau t had to go out because uh, the compressor and turbine there is a power balance between them and we have assumed the processes to be 100 percent efficient. So, the compressor power must be equal to the turbine power. So, when you do that you can eliminate tau t and that is what we have done here. So, it will be only dependent on tau c uh, theta naught and theta b. Now, we have done all these calculations right. Uh, what we need to do is cross check whether what we have got is correct. How do we do that? How do we cross check uh, what you got is correct or not? Put in some that still does not tell us anything. See what do we know? You will always assume previous class is true right or previous class is correct. So, we know the results for ramjet right. What is the result for ramjet? The result for ramjet was F by m dot a a naught is equal to m naught theta v by, by theta naught minus 1 for eta is equal to 1. This is for this was the result that we had for ramjet. Now, what is the difference between uh, ramjet and a turbojet? That you have a compressor right compressor and therefore, a turbine. So, what happens if you put tau c to be equal to 1? compressor pressure ratio or pi c is 1 or tau c is 1, compressor turbine uh, temperature ratio is 1 or compressor uh, pressure ratio is 1 that is what is a ramjet right. So, if you put tau c is equal to 1 here what happens theta naught theta naught cancels off and uh, you get uh, tau c this is theta b by theta naught right. So, let us do that. <coughs> Turbo jet becomes a ramjet when tau c is equal to 1. So, when we substitute tau c is equal to 1 in the expression for ramjet uh, turbo jet you get theta b minus theta naught into 1 plus theta naught minus theta b by theta naught tau c is again 1. Okay. Now, it is obvious that you can cancel out this and you get you can take out theta b common. So, you get m naught and uh, if you take out theta b as common what you get is 1 minus 1 by theta naught
this is anyway the same as uh, you you can take 1 by theta naught out you will again get So, I get which is the same as ramjet. So, in that sense it is consistent, okay. what we have derived is consistent with when we put tau c is equal to 1 we get the ramjet result. Okay. Now, there is another thing that we need to look at what is that uh, we know that turbo jets have a static thrust, right? turbo jets do produce a static thrust. Now, we need to uh, find out whether the expressions that we have derived do show that. Now, in this expression here what happens what is the condition for static thrust if you put m naught is equal to 0 then you get 0 no. So, suddenly we have done all this extravagant calculations and suddenly found out that we are on the wrong side our equations do not bring out that fact that it still can produce you know static thrust looks like it produces zero thrust or is there a catch to it so, let us see see we know that what is theta naught 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m naught square okay so if you you can you have m naught and theta naught minus 1. So, m naught by under root theta naught minus 1 is equal to what do you get here? Huh? Under root right. So, we can use that here and rewrite the expression let us do that. So, I get uh, Is this correct? Right? We have substituted for this in the earlier equation, and now using this, if you put here m naught equal to 0, this goes to 0. So, the expression for static thrust would be static thrust of a turbo jet
So, you get So, this is uh, a non zero quantity. So, therefore, we can safely say that uh, whatever we have derived is uh, correct and it produces non zero static thrust. Okay. Even when m naught is equal to 0, uh, what happens when m naught is equal to 0? What happens to theta naught? Theta naught, sorry, when m naught is equal to 0, it means that theta naught should be 1. So, you substitute it here. Again, you can uh, rewrite this expression. Theta naught uh, So, this can not go to 0 and therefore, we have a positive static thrust. Okay. At the static thrust itself, there is some air moving in the compressor itself, some air got sucked in the compressor. So it got some velocity. Yes. So, is it M not really zero? Or okay. Uh, what is the takeoff velocity of an aircraft? Uh, Two forty. Yeah. Two forty. Two forty kilometers per second. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, so, you have take off velocity around 250 kilometers per hour. What is the speed of sound at that condition? Uh, meters per second. So, you convert it into kilometers per second, kilometers per hour. Uh, <coughs> one one. So I'll assume it to be fine. Around one thousand two hundred kilometers per hour. So you calculate the Mach number based on this. What will it be? So, what is the sacrosanct about 0.3 Mach number, which we say is the regime where we differentiate that the flow is incompressible and then the flow becomes compressible. What is this limit of 0.3? So, the density variation is less than 5 percent. So, if you look at this number here, Mach number is 0.21. So, if we do 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2, this is m naught square nothing but theta naught how different will it be from 1 this will be anyway close to 1 no so even while the aircraft is taking off with uh, very high velocities of around 240 250 kilometers per hour uh, the mach number is around 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 which means that it's still theta naught is still around 1 so, therefore, <coughs> this is consistent, what we have done here is consistent. Right? Okay. Now, uh, let us uh, look at what happens to the other quantity of interest to us that is ISP. Okay.
uh, in the previous class when we were looking at uh, ramjet we had already uh, done this uh, exercise and we noted that isp by a not which is the speed of sound we can write this as 1 by f into f by m dot a a not right and we, we said that we put in a lot of effort to find out this expression so it is meaningful to use this to get the isp so we know this part and we need to evaluate what is this quantity right so let us do that uh, we can evaluate this by again uh, looking at the power balance in the combustor from energy balance across combustor I can write m dot f q is equal to m dot a into 1 plus f okay fine and uh, what we will again do is we are trying to find an expression for f uh, we will say that f here in comparison to 1 is small so therefore we will neglect that we can do that even while trying to derive this expression for f so f is nothing but m dot f by m dot a so using this So I can rewrite my expression as one by F must be equal to Q by C P. I'll take out T naught as common. Then I'll be left with T T four by. by t naught okay what is uh, t t 4 by t naught this is theta b what is this t t 3 by t t 2 into t t 2 by t t naught t naught this is theta naught this is 1 this is tau c so you get 1 by f is equal to q by c p t naught into theta b minus tau c theta naught okay so this is the expression into now we have got uh, 1 by f there so i can write the complete expression for isp by a naught as equal to theta naught tau c plus theta naught <coughs> c 
So, this is the expression that we have for ISP by A0. Uh, we will stop here and we will continue in the next class. Thank you.